We all need more contrast and space marines in our life. Therefore, I give you the most smurfy bolter boys of them all, the Ultramarine. So I'm back with another Space Marine and Contrast Paint tutorial. Just like the previous time, we're going to start quite easily with just applying all the contrast paints and, and when that is done we just add a couple of extra layers with different Citadel paints and also a few Vallejo paints. Without further ado, let's paint. I start by priming the miniature black. I then Zenithal spray with the Wraithbone white from above. I got a lot of questions on why I do the Zenith spray. And it's quite simple actually, because when you do it this way, all the bottom parts underneath the arms and under the legs etc. becomes darker and this way when I apply the contrast paints, it has even more of a shade on where the lights wouldn't be hitting. So it will be much more natural than just spraying the whole miniature in white. The first color that I apply is the even then yellow. And this will be the base for all of my gold parts on the miniature. Make sure you apply this cleanly because if you get it where there will be blue parts you will have a green tint. And don't do like me, don't forget to paint the edges of the shoulder pads yellow as well. We then base the whole miniature with the ultramarine blue. You can be quite generous when you apply this color. If you don't add enough you will have poolings and you will have different blotches of the paint all over the miniature, so be quite generous. It can be quite hard to control all the paint now that you have a lot of paint in your brush, but try to be really careful around the golden parts. As I mentioned before, I completely forgot about the gold on the shoulder pads. So I just went back again, painted everything white and then applied the layer of the even then yellow. All the metal parts are then painted with Black Templar. I'm also using Black Templar to fill in the joints between all the blue metal parts. I really enjoy how this Black Templar works on these type of parts. Because the darker parts really becomes black and the upper parts has this grey highlight. Painting the purity seal I'm using a 50-50 mix of even then yellow and snakebite leather. When that is mixed, I'm adding a third part of Lamian Medium, about 30%. It's time for my so far biggest favorite among these contrast paints, and it's the Snake Bite Leather. We're using this to paint all the leather parts of the miniature. On the handle of the power sword I'm doing a 50-50 mix of Blood Angels Red and Snake Bite Leather. I'm then painting the belt and some of the smaller details with Saigor Brown. This is a very dark and opaque brown and it fits perfectly if there's something that you want to be almost in shade and almost black but still have some color. It's time for the first semi-difficult part of this tutorial. We're doing the non-metallic metal on the shoulders and on everything that's gold. So we start by adding a layer of snake bite leather to about 50% of the shoulder pads. Because of how metal reflects lights, the shadowy parts will be on the upper side of the shoulder edges. And for the winged skull, we're just adding it on the inner parts, about 25% of the wings and underneath the skull.
When the first layer has dried on the edges of the shoulder pads, we're going another lap with the snake bite leather. This time it's about 30% of the edges that will be covered. And the final shadowy parts with the extra punch will be Saigor Brown to about 10-15% of the edges of the shoulder pads and in the inner parts of the wings, just to give that extra punch in the shadows. If you just want a quick job and only use the contrast paints, you are pretty much done now. You just have to paint the sword in whatever color you think fits perfectly. But if you're like me, you want your miniatures to have something a little bit extra. We're going to take this to the next level. I'm painting the center of the eyes with some whites and this is because later on we will give them some glow. We then paint the power sword with Vallejo metal color silver. The power glow is made by adding a thick layer of a thermic blue at the bottom of the sword. I'm then shading the sword by using black temper again. I'm just adding this to one side of the sword and dragging it upwards slowly. This way I get a thin shading and I still get to keep some of that sheen from the metal paint. It's time to start highlighting the armor. We start with Cantor blue. Sotek Green and Vallejo Glacier Blue. I will be adding these highlights using a couple of different techniques, but mainly wet blending. The Cantor Blue is quite similar to the contrast paint Ultramarine Blue. And the most important thing to get this realistic contrast to the miniature is the placement of the highlights. So all circular shapes like the shoulder pads and the shoes will have the highlight on the highest points and all the cylinders will have them going across in the center of them or on the sides. So the first highlight I'm doing is a mix of Cantor Blue and Sotek Green. While this is still wet, I'm just adding brighter colors with more saturation. So I go directly to Sotek Green and when that is done, I just add a bit of the Glacier Blue to the Sotek Green and just go higher and higher until I reach a point that I think is good with this mini. So I just do this all over the miniature, I go back and forth and just add this to all the metal parts. This way you will have this really natural contrast. And don't be afraid of doing this. If you feel like you mess up, just go back, add some canter blue and start off from the top again. It's just a plastic miniature, so if you fail it really doesn't matter. And as you might have seen when you watch me paint, when I come to the brighter parts, I use a lot of stippling to get the glacier blue where I want it. This way I feel like I get more control than dragging the brush along. It's time to highlight the gold and I'm using Flash Gits Yellow mixed with white. And here comes the tongue twister. For the edges of the edges of the shoulder pads, I'm using a mix of white and Flash Gits Yellow. 
and on the center parts where lights would reflect the most, I'm just using a clear white. For example, on the corners of the shoulder pads or on the top part of the center of the skull or the edges of the wings. There you can have completely clean white. And when highlighting the metal parts, I'm starting off with a demonet hide. I do a layer of this on the belt buckle on the bottom parts. And on the weapon, I'm just adding it to the sides of the weapon. And the same thing here, because it's almost a cylindrical shape, you don't want it to be on the edges on the top, you want it on the side. And when the first layer is done, I just keep adding some white to the demonet hide until I get to something that is almost like 70% white and 30% demonet hide. And then I just add small dots of clear white on some of the edges to get a real bright reflection. It's time for the eyes, and for this I'm using Vallejo Fluorescent Orange. This just needs a thin layer of orange added to the eye and it will pop like it's almost glowing. But this one, it doesn't matter if you get a bit on the blue, it will just add some to the glow effect. It's time for the last part, this is the gem on the power sword. On the bottom part of the gem we're using Blood Angel Red, and on the upper part it's Black Templar. I'm doing this with a wet blend, so the colors are still wet when I mix them together. And when these are dried, I'm just adding a small, completely white dot on the top of the gem, and this is to get the reflection of light hitting a gemstone. And we're done! We have a really nice looking, high level ultramarine. I'm really happy with the dark mood of this one, and I think that it could be achievable for almost any painter. If you don't succeed the first time, don't be let down, just try again and you will get there. I'm starting to get to feel a bit more of this contrast paint and I still really like the paint, but I don't think it's for everyone. When I use it, I mostly use it as sort of a, a base layer and I use it a bit for the shades. And I think it's a good start when you start painting, but I'm not sure how deep you can go with like the super technical stuff because once you've gone over the white once with the, the contrast paints you can't go over it with a new one just like I did with the shoulder pads here uh, I kind of forgot that I wanted the shoulder pads gold so I painted them blue and then I had to go back and clean everything up with the white again and it just took a lot of extra time for me, just that small detail so consider that when, you, when you're interested in buying the paints um, they're really good for just going through the first couple of layers in no time and then I feel like you have to add like the, the, contra the, the real contrast and uh, the highlights afterwards. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, uh, there is another contrast paint video coming sometime in a week or so with Stormcasts and I'm uh, doing a non-metallic metal throughout the whole miniature. So it's gonna be a bit of an experiment, but I, I think it will work out quite fine actually. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button by clicking my icon on this side. And if you have any questions, just leave it in the comment sections down below. And with that said, have a great day. Bye.